Hello, I recently did a video on the DSO-138. Now this is an oscilloscope and it's all on a board. And it's quite handy if you're playing about with synthesizers and things because it works in the audio range. Banggood have recently sent me another oscilloscope and this time it comes in a case. There you go. And uh, you get a little stash bag of components because you're supposed to build this yourself. But they've partially built it already because they've put all the surface mount components already on the board for you. So these are just sort of normal sized components. So hopefully this is going to be a little bit easier for me to put together. Now I must state for YouTube rules that uh, Banggood do not pay me for making this video and they don't give me any kickback from sales but they do give me the item for free. So let's just clear that up. Right, uh, let me show you what we've got. So this is the uh, destruction manual and the first part you can ignore because this is all about placing the surface mount components and that fortunately is already done. Now yeah, step one, step two, it all goes in order and then you get a little map of the London Underground there. <laughs> no, not really, sorry. Uh, Right, OK, step one, check the main board, connect a 9 volt power supply, centre positive to J7 on the main board. You should see the scope boots up to a screen similar to the photo below. Test the four buttons. You should see responses on the screen. Do this after the buttons have been installed. Oh, right, OK, two, three, four, five, six. Number six, install the buttons. Number one, check the unit before the buttons have been installed. That's a bit back to front, that is. So why didn't they put that after there? Anyway, uh, whatever. So it looks like I'm going to have to put these pieces on first and then go back to step one. OK, I'm going to put these pieces on and then when I get to number six, I'll go back to number one and check that. Oh, look, even the power switch is on there on the photo. And yet that's number four. So. Right, OK, let's uh, partially build it and then we'll go back to step one. So first thing, test signal terminal just here. And it looks like I have to bend the pins on there. So that part, this is the main board. That's the uh, analog board. We'll come back to that later. So that looks like this. And where's that going? That's going to go up here. But I've got to bend it into place. So one moment. I'll speed these bits up for you. It wasn't really clear which way to put this on. You could have put it on the top of the board or the bottom of the board. But I've just done a bit of measuring up with the back plate here and I'm assuming it goes on the bottom of the board here opposite to the display. So next component is a 9 volt connector and that goes just there. That isn't really necessary because you've got the jack plug here. So mm, that's an optional power connector. But uh, the piece on the bottom that fits here and has the power switch and the 9 volt connector, there's no hole there for that. So I'm assuming that may have been for an internal battery, which would have been handy on this. Next the switch. So the switch is soldered into place and now I need the jumper which is the four pin header and that according to the instructions I'm going to have to search around. I think this is where the uh, rotary switch goes very close to that and uh, it's got little boxes here so you can tick the little boxes off as you've done them. It's got to go on the back of the board because it's got this extension piece of circuit board for the switch because the switch is obviously too high when it sits on the board there. So it's actually going to go underneath it. So this extension board will go on the back here and the switch will go onto that piece. So the next thing is uh, the tactile switches. There's four of these. Now the next thing you've got to remove a resistor off the board and the resistor has been put there so that it bypasses the power switch that hasn't been fitted so that they can test the board during manufacture. So now we've put the power switch on we have to remove resistor number 30 and on the board that is just here. Right let's see if this is possible. Put uh, a bit of solder on the soldering iron 
and get a, a small screwdriver this is the resistor we have to remove because now the switch is there that's bypassed so if I can uh, just heat this up and then knock it off there you go it's on the back of the soldering iron there or is it yes ouch it's just fallen back onto the board there you go that's the thing you have to remove so now we've got here we've got to go back to part one and uh, check the actual thing so I'm going to power it up now and see if I get this sort of uh, thing on the display here but I don't understand why they didn't write that down here and anyway whatever let's see what happens so as this is a 9 volt oscilloscope I am just going to use a 9 volt battery so I'll plug that into the bottom there and the switch is in the on position that direction and I'll see if we're going to get this sort of information on the screen here so let's see what happens and powering up now oh that looks promising very nice mm -hmm. well that certainly looks interesting let's test these buttons then I don't know what that's supposed to be doing but it's doing something yes it's moving things around so the button and that is a freeze button and a run so yeah that piece is working okay sorry my finger slipped slightly on the battery so I've just sort of reset it but yeah okay those buttons work so now we're going to move on to the analog board that's this small board here and the first uh, components are going to be resistors there's plenty of resistors to put on there and as it states here always meter the resistors before soldering so that's good because I can't actually see what the colors are on this thing very well so there you go there's a multimeter and there's a piece of paper with all the values written on it and I'm just going to go through with the multimeter check and then put the resistor into well wherever they go and I could just put all the resistors in and then solder them but uh, I prefer to do it one lot at a time so I'm going to flip this over and do one resistor then the next 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 until all this is finished so don't worry I'm not going to bore you with this I'm going to fast forward so there we go all the resistors are placed and I've ticked off all the boxes now the next component is the ceramic capacitors now on here you'll see it'll just give you the value 0 0.1 microfarad and what you really need to know there is that will be the capacity with 104 written on it now I've uh, put them in place here now these are the values and this is the numbers that you'll see actually written on the capacitors so 121 is 120 picofarads because it's 1 2 and 1 multiplier which is another zero if you like uh, but I'll just put this little chart here for a moment and you can sort of freeze the screen and there's all your values so right I'm going to put all these into place now so that's all the ceramic capacitors in place and now the trimmer capacitors now they're quite easy to find on here just there and there so I've jumped ahead a little bit and put the switch on as well here so now all we've got left to do is the electrolytic capacitors there's five of them and they're all the same value so you don't have to sort them out they're all exactly the same the only thing you do have to remember is when you put them down onto the board the longer lead is the positive so make sure that goes uh, where it says positive on the circuit board and that'll be the little square pad not the circle pad because these have to go in the correct way round or else uh, you will have problems so I'll just uh, drop these into place and solder them in making sure they're all oriented the correct way now it's the uh, BNC connector and what you might find here is because this is such a large piece of metal that the uh, soldering iron might take a while before it starts to solder this so if you've got a good powerful soldering iron great but if not it's just going to take a little moment before that starts to solder so I'll, I'll just get that piece on now 
there we go the audio board is complete at last now what we have to do next is put the rotary encoder onto this board and you'll see you could put it on either side but it's the side that has the rectangle drawn on it so that's the way the switch has to go on so we pop that onto there and solder that into place next and that has to go onto this header here there we go uh, don't make the mistake I've just made I've just put all this together and I forgot to take this plastic film off the screen so I had to disassemble it again to take that off if you want to take that off of course but uh, there you go all together now moving on to step number four attach the analog board to the main board by mating J3 on the analog board to J4 on the main power supply board right that's why this has got uh, two pin headers so you need to attach it to this pin header on the bottom there so we'll uh, drop that in there like so and it should look like that okay uh, apply 9 volt power supply nine volts and turn it on I guess oh and make sure that the coupling switch is in the ground position which it is on this one right next check the voltages at the points as shown in the photo right I'll just do a quick check of voltages oh, the screen looks really nice actually it's very sharp so I've got 9 volts going in and then this V plus 8.19 that's fine and then we go and follow all of these points on here and check the voltages down in the chart here so step four is fine all the voltages are within the tolerance in the chart there so moving over to step five probe calibration well I found these old adjustment tools from when I used to repair televisions back in the old days when they used to be huge CRT TVs but they're no use anymore and I can't even shave them down to size so what I found is a screwdriver with a plastic handle it's not ideal but it'll do the job so what I've got to do now on capacitor 3 is try and get this as level and flat as possible and you'll see as I adjust it it sort of uh, ever so slightly tilts off see the sort of left hand side of it is higher than the right hand side of it so if I get it about there I think that's about as straight as that signal is going to be now tune number five which is this capacitor here so that a sharp rectangle waveform is obtained now what's happening here if you look on the the beginning of the waveform you're getting this sort of peak happening there and a peak sort of here so we really want to get rid of those so it's as flat as possible there so it was making a difference so if I turn that back until that just about disappears ah there we go now we take this piece off and start to assemble it at last you've got to make sure that this connector goes into into that socket and the socket is right underneath the glass here and I don't want to put any pressure on that so let's just try and work that down nice and gently into place and then you just put the front frame on yeah, it's a pity that really I think they've missed a trick here if they made this case just a little bit thicker they could have uh, given enough room to put a, a battery pack inside it because after all it's so small and portable but then it's not really portable if you've got to plug it into a power supply so mm. so there we go got the oscilloscope set up to this little synthesizer here and uh, there's a, a rectangular wave change the width of it 
Yep. That's useful. And oh, isn't that pretty? So it's pretty quick, it's responsive. I think that wave's probably a bit too big on that now, so... It's uh, working. It's it looks pretty good actually. Uh, the only drawback about this, as I said earlier, is it's a pity it couldn't just take a battery actually inside the case because then that would have made it truly portable. Instead, I've got to have a jack plug connected to a nine volt battery to power it, and it would have been nicer if that could have fitted actually inside the oscilloscope. But other than that, yeah, I mean, for the price of this, it's a uh, great little scope and a uh, little bit tricky to snap it all together and screw it together. But other than that, it's a very handy little device. And what you can do as well, if I can remember, is if you press the OK button for three seconds, you get all sorts of uh, information coming up on the screen here that's changing. The kilohertz, uh, the cycle, the pulse widths, and everything. So it's uh, not just drawing a line, you know, it'll actually give you some handy information as well. So if you uh, like this video, please give us a thumbs up, and uh, if possible, click the subscribe button and the little bell next to it, and uh, I'll get on with my next video very soon. Thanks very much for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.